I have talked to them. Tempers flared at the prestigious National Press Club in Washington, D.C. You have gone there as a radical leftist who hates Jews okay, in, in order to... Uh, radical... Don't you stick things in my face. A pro-Israeli advocate knocked a camera out of the hands of Alison Weir, president of the Council for the National Interest Foundation. The group just finished their press conference on what they call unjustifiable U.S. aid to Israel. The two sides met when the press club scheduled a pro-Israeli news conference to follow, held in the same room. The altercation illustrates heightened tensions on differing views regarding America's relationship with Israel. The Council for the National Interest Foundation wants America to know how much of their tax dollars are going to Israel. Three trillion dollars. That's including a massive amount of direct money to Israel, then a lot of hidden costs. CNIF alleges Israel receives so much aid and special treatment because the U.S. Congress is controlled by AIPAC, America's pro-Israeli lobby. Executive Director Philip Girardi says Israel spends a lot of money on U.S. elections. There are many Israeli PACs, and they do give a lot of money very selectively to congressmen that they want to support. The Council for the National Interest Foundation says many members of Congress fear if they don't always side with Israel that they will face retaliation in their own re-election campaigns. If a congressman uh, crosses the Israel lobby by voting against aid for Israel or voting against some, some uh, legislation that Israel favors, they very often will find that the next time they're running for office, there will be a candidate put up against them who is very well funded. Giraldi is a former CIA counterterrorism expert. He questions why America gives aid to Israel when Israel conducts more espionage for profit against the U.S. than any other U.S. friendly country. They steal military technology, they steal uh, information that is useful for uh, telecommunications. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Karen Katowski works at the Pentagon and says Israel receives preferential treatment. We do not question what the Israelis want. Katowski believes America is beginning to take more interest in U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East, in large part due to tough economic times. More and more Americans want to know where their hard-earned tax dollars are going and why. As Pakistan's parliament has formally opened a debate on whether or not to reopen the supply line for the U.S.-led forces in the neighboring Afghanistan, anti-U.S. protests have erupted countrywide with calling for an end to alliance with the U.S. in its so-called war on terror. On Sunday, thousands of tribal people gathered in Pakistan's Bajawal tribal agency bordering Afghanistan to protest against the possible resumption of supplies to U.S.-led forces in Afghanistan and the country's alliance with the U.S. in its so-called war on terror. By opening the NATO supplies, Pakistan will be giving a negative signal to the fighting forces of Afghanistan that we are still on American side in this war. However, we won't let this happen. We will organize massive protests across the country to block supply routes to U.S.-led NATO forces. The protesters demand an immediate end to the U.S. assassination drone strikes in the country's tribal belt. They have called on the government to quit the U.S.-led coalition and adopt an independent foreign policy which they urge to be free from the U.S. influence. The protest, which was organized by the country's largest political religious party, Jamaat Islami, came as Pakistan's parliament is re-evaluating relationships with the U.S. The review was called after a U.S. airstrike attacked a Pakistani military outpost in northwest Pakistan on November 26, killing at least 24 Pakistani troops. In response to the airstrike, Pakistan also blocked its supply routes to the U.S.-led forces in Afghanistan. Pakistan ke atan mein pisa dawam is par yaksu hai. About 98% of Pakistanis believe that alliance with the U.S. is the sole reason for the current worsening situation which is destabilizing the country. Besides other major issues like insecurity, inflation and unemployment are also the outcome of Pakistan's alliance with the U.S.
everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, April 2nd, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, it's ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013, so please subscribe to that. Okay, so I'm ready to move on here. You just saw that last video, in case you didn't know what it was. Um, I'll just uh, show you quickly the little title, and all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, or if you're if you're a new listener or viewer. It was CERT women for Gaddafi students storm NTC headquarters, uh, saying Allah, Mumar, Libya was boss. So, Okay, first article I have up, I'll go through the war on terror, liberty, sovereignty, basically the Middle East news, and uh, anything that pertains to the United States, because it usually does, because the United States, along with Israel, has their hands uh, all around the world are tentacles so and I'll show that in this video and then hopefully we'll move into some more um, uh, big brother uh, some spying some more war on terror uh, as far as the homeland goes in the United States surveillance and maybe even eugenics I hopefully we'll get to that in a third video Syria says revolt is over but army is still shooting so Syria says a seven-year revolt to topple Assad is over but the army against uh, Army again shelled opposition areas on Saturday. And rebels said they would not cease fire until tanks, artillery, heavy weapons are withdrawn. It says Washington and Gulf Arab states urge peace envoy Kofi Annan to set a timeline for the next steps if there is no cease fire. And Saudi Arabia reported a call for rebels to be armed. So this is what the, uh, mainstream media is going to put out. It's pure propaganda for the West and for the uh, Basically, yeah, for the United States and Israel. So one of the terrorist commanders uh, was quoted as saying, we cannot accept the presence of tanks and troops and armored vehicles among the people. So you have to look at it from the standpoint of this being uh, pure propaganda for the West. Uh, this article in particular, Reuters. And uh, so when they say Syria uh, says the revolt is over, the Syrian government knows that uh, the revolt isn't over because the revolt is an insurgency by the West into their country. So it's not over. Uh, even though they did just draft a new constitution that was passed, it doesn't really matter uh, because as long as these uh, foreign foreigners or uh, basically foreign entities are funding these terrorists inside the country of Syria to wreak havoc, um, there's not going to be peace. So, but uh, you got to be able to see between the lines, read between the lines here. Uh, so we have this next article, who is Kofi Annan, the United Nations peacekeeper, handpicked by the CIA, basically going on. says he's a very charismatic uh, personality, thoughtful, intelligent, and uh, how he was born into an aristocratic family of the British colony of the Gold Coast. And, uh, you know, basically that he was groomed. He was groomed by these uh, globalists. A successful career despite tragic failures. One of them was the Oil for Food program. If the appointment of Mr. Anand was approved de facto by members of the Sec Security Council and those of the Arab League, it is because it satisfies conflicting expectations. For some, the Joint Special Envoy is not intended to broker peace, but to clad a peace that has already been negotiated between the great powers so that everyone can stand tall. Others expect him to repeat the Kenyan script and bring about regime change without further violence. It would thus seem that the Joint Special Envoy is engineering a way out uh, for those states that have attacked Syria and invented the fable of a democratic revolution crushed in blood. However, the doublespeak of Kofi Annan, who went into Damascus, was satisfied with his meeting with President al-Assad, but expressed disappointed uh, once back in Geneva, has not raised any questions about his true intentions. Secretary Clinton says Syrian President Assad must go, says we think uh, Assad must go. So very simple, says the sooner the better for everyone concerned. So who do, who are we and who's concerned? Well, the Council on Foreign Relations. That's probably one of them that she answers to. Says there has to be a timeline and it can't go on indefinitely. So according to reports that I've seen, this statement that she makes is not true, but says the vast majority of the people who are standing up against the horrific assaults of the military machine in Syria are ordinary citizens defending themselves and their homes. Next up, West seeks uh, to perpetuate Syrian bloodbaths as Friends of Syria Summit in Istanbul, Turkey, seeks means of rehabilitating, rearming, and redeploying uh, hobbled terrorist proxies. And it goes on, it says much of this report is based on the Corbett reports, talking about R2P, and I've covered that as well as, uh, as far as the uh, Turkish border and uh, a humanitarian crisis uh, breaking out with a, uh, basically a flood of refugees coming over the border from Syria to Turkey and allowing them to uh, basically declare it a humanitarian zone.
So does the indeed the entire premise of the responsibility to protect doctrine, R2P, follows that if a nation is incapable of providing protection for its own population, it relinquishes its sovereignty to direct intervention by international by the international community. Sorry, should such a nation manage to restore order, however, the R2P doctrine, along with the meddling it justifies and the window for regime change it opens, no longer applies. Knowing this and realizing the window for forcing regime change in Syria is closing, the West is actually seeking ways to perpetuate the bloodbath and not end it until their objective of removing al-Assad has been achieved, uh, revealing the incredible detail of the insidious nature of the so-called humanitarian R2P model. In relation to regime change, there's this quick uh, little uh, sentence here I'm going to go through. In fact, Vice President al Ashara has been in charge of these negotiations with the opposition for a year, and the demand made by Saudi Arabia and Qatar is totally different, that President al-Assad should step down because he is an Alawite, sorry if I butchered that, and that uh, the power be transferred to the Vice President for being a Sunni. The United States and dozens of other countries moved closer on Sunday to direct intervention in fighting in Syria, with Arab nations pledging $100 million to pay opposition fighters, and the Obama regime agreeing to send communications equipment to help the terrorists organize and evade Syria's military, according to participants gathered here. So again, once more here, Gulf states to pay salaries for Syrian free army. The Syrian real army kills eight uh, rebel terrorists in uh, Idlib, a free 66 in Ham, says the Syrian army has killed at least eight armed men in the fresh clashes in the northwest city. It says eight terrorists were killed. It uh, basically clashes broke out between the Syrian army and armed groups in the northwest city. It says there's no reports of casualties. The western Syrian opposition accused the government of killing the protesters, but the Damascus but Damascus blames outlaws, saboteurs, and armed terrorist groups for the unrest, stating that it is being orchestrated from abroad. Russia rejects deadline for a non-Syria peace plan. says here, Russia on Monday rejected Arab and Western calls for a deadline to be set f uh, for the Syrian regime's implementation of a peace plan put forward by the international mediator Kofi Annan. So he says ultimatums and artificial deadlines really help matters. And this is what Clinton was just calling for, remember? Russian destroyer heads for Syrian report. So uh, last time they... Um, the Russians said that, that this wasn't true, so I can't confirm that, that this is actually happening, but this is what's being reported. So according to Russian military officials, the warship left its Black Sea base uh, for, the Medi for the Mediterranean during the weeks. Uh, it says it will soon arrive at Syria's second largest port of Tardis. Uh, but the Russians say that it's uh, purely routine and that there will be no... Um, leaving the ship while it's docked. Next up, we have Ayatollah Khomeini warns U.S. don't intervene in Syria. He says the Islamic Republic will defend Syria because of its support for the resistance line against the Zionist regime of Israel and is vehemently opposed to any intervention of foreign forces in Syria, uh, he said on Thursday. So I'm not sure if you guys remember this article that I covered uh, probably about a month or two ago. Iran suspends Reuters over a manipulated report on female ninjas. That's right, they're calling this little uh, group here of ninjas uh, basically terrorists that were ready to die. So Iran has suspended press activities of Reuters in Tehran after a news agency distorted a report of young Iranian women training in Japanese martial arts, uh, nejutsu. And it was crazy because they didn't tell them that, that they were going to put out a hit piece on them, and they welcomed it in into their dojo too. It says Uruguay ready to barter rice for Iranian oil. This is going a lot where people, going on a lot where um, countries are now trying to circumvent these sanctions by uh, bartering and trading uh, food for oil. And so it says here, India says ready to start paying for Iranian oil in rupees. And also the Indian military moving towards directed energy weapons, i.e. lasers and missile shield technology. That's pretty interesting because we also have called to develop road striking capability along borders. So they want to reinforce their border, India that is, with China. So and they're also buying fighter jets. China says U.S. has no authority to impose unilateral sanctions on countries dealing with Iran. China to continue oil imports from Iran and North Korea f did fire off their two short-range missiles last Thursday. I didn't even see that reported. Uh, child witnesses to Afghan massacre say Robert Bales was not acting alone. Then the lawyer says that it's an almost complete information blackout, which is blocking him from preparing a proper defense for Bales. A new poll says Afghan war support hits new low, so U.S. Ambassador Crocker says Al-Qaeda could plan another 9-11 attack from Afghanistan unless we keep fighting. And as four more die in a drone strike in Pakistan, Pentagon has no records of Osama bin Laden's death. Thank you.